Shavuot Tov, everybody, and a warm welcome to everyone who's joined us. Shavuot Tov, everybody, a warm welcome. It's such a wonderful opportunity to be here together with you, albeit virtually, to share in an incredible sing-along which we're about to experience with two of Melbourne's favorite Chazanim, and of course some words of inspiration from some of my colleagues. I have the privilege of welcoming you and sharing a short opening. Unfortunately, I have to leave straight after to ensure that we have only five people that are here to broadcast. Now, of course, tonight's theme is really to give you some inspiration, some songs from the favorite songs of the high holidays, because unfortunately, we're not sure how many of us will be allowed to go to shul, whether it will be any of us, which is some of us, and so we're hoping tonight to bring some inspiration to you. And I was thinking about it, you know, what's the difference between a drasha, a speech, and a song? It's a very famous idea, because of course, on the high holidays, many people look to hearing the rabbi's sermon, hopefully, and of course, people really enjoy the songs of the holiday beautiful chazonas, the songs that have so much meaning. And the truth is, what is the difference between a song and a speech? And I suggest there's three differences, three lessons which we can hopefully learn as we go into the new year, two weeks away from Rosh Hashanah. The first is that when it comes to a speech, if somebody else starts speaking while I'm talking, it will interrupt me. But with a song, when another person starts to sing, it creates a harmony. As well with a song, if you don't understand the words, it doesn't matter. Because you can listen to opera or other, of course, Jewish songs, and even if you don't know the exact meaning, you can still enjoy it. When it, when it comes to a speech, if you don't understand the words, of course, it won't be very meaningful. And finally, with a speech, if you heard it more than once, it's pretty much boring. With a song, you can hear it over and over again, and it can still be meaningful. And here in these three lessons, I think we can hopefully take with ourselves as we go two weeks to go to Rosh Hashanah. Number one, don't just look at life as a speech. Look at life as a song. Bring people into your life. Inspire others. Give more kindness. Because the more you bring into it, the more of harmony that you'll create in your world and in the world around you. Number two, we don't always understand everything. I think one of the greatest things about humility is, is recognizing and appreciating that we don't always understand everything. If we can go into the, two, the next two weeks saying to Hashem, look, we don't always understand why you do things. If we can go into the next two weeks thinking, look, maybe I wronged somebody, maybe somebody wronged me, because I don't understand. And lower my ego, hopefully we can create more harmony in our own, in our own lives. And finally... When it comes to a song, as we said, the more you sing it, even if you don't understand it, you can sing it over and over again. And of course, like a speech which you can't say over and over again. I think here and again is one final message, and that is, because a song, it's not about the message in terms of understanding the song. It's about the emotion behind it. It's about the feeling behind it. And so when you speak to your friend this week, when you speak to their spouse, your children, a parent, a colleague, remember that it's not so much about the message or the words, it's about the feeling behind it. So hopefully you can express that to all those around you. Create peace, got a lot of harmony, sympathy, and joy. Enjoy tonight. Be uplifted tonight. Be inspired tonight. And hopefully we'll all be together in Yerushalayim Yerak Kodesh and Rosh Hashanah this year. Have a wonderful night. A Shavuot and a good vibe.
I think, a really exciting evening. And I'll tell you why. Because it's exciting because we don't exactly know what is going to happen next. <laughs> and that makes it exciting for us too. By 2020. Uh, exactly right. By 2020. So the idea is tonight, we're going to go through the Rosh Hashanah Maso. And we're going to explore some tunes that are familiar. Some might be unfamiliar. And what we're going to do is look at ways in which Reb Moishi, Reb Shmuley, myself, Chazal Dov, Tani, Noel, Tvilon, of Rosh Hashanah, and look at different opportunities for us to learn something from one another. So we're going to start with the Nusaf that we all know. Let's sing it together.
different Musa for the night time of Maharim as there is for the morning. When you move to the morning, things change and the mood changes. And there's even a different Musa in Shafras as there is in Musa. And whoever's at shul early in the morning, whoever's there early to hear when the Chazal starts Shafras, you start with Hamelech. And you don't need music, you don't need pianos, you don't need guitars to appreciate the beautiful Musaf. And the Chazan goes, Aha!
spent 20 minutes. In the old days in shuls, Chazan would stand there and he would sing, he would be, and he would sing, and he would sing, and people would be quiet. Can you imagine that? People being quiet for 20 minutes while Chazan sings, without clapping, without dancing, without special tricks, just to the voice of the cantor. Today it's not so easy. But let me say, still, Hinami is one of those prayers that I think is very special and is sung in different ways to our congregations. However, after the Chazan sings, we begin with the Kaddish. We're not going to do the whole Kaddish, but it's important that we sing a little bit of it because you guys know that when you hear this, you stand up and we know that Musaf is about to begin. It starts like this.
in London. I remember, you know, the legendary Rabbi Brown when I came here. Amicha <laughs> Meicha, who is like you are? Barachamim al Nesfo Faram, Zaycha Yitzudo, Mechayim, Barachamim, don't take it away. Remember that? Obviously, the highlight for many people of the Rosh Hashanah and the Kippur Davani is. Well, the son of Tokyo, the Rosh Hashanah, because it pulls in the heartstrings. And these lines are songs that people know, know and can sing along and enjoy. But again, every shul has their, their, their special tune. We sing as follows.
the mighty Israel, there's so many students. Depends where you are around the world, there's so many. We could spend 20 minutes on Shema Yisrael, but we wouldn't do that to you. Shema
on Kenya, which is a central theme throughout the entire you know, Rosh Hashanah prayer. And to all of us listening over here tonight, what's the beautiful thing about God is you can call him Tata, Abba. You can call him sweet dear Father in heaven. Because he loves us. Yes, it's true, he's Malkeinu. He's our king. But before we say Malkeinu, who are Vinu? Know that he's also your father. He's our father in heaven. Not just a king. You know what it means that the king in heaven is your Abba? So when you come to Rosh Hashanah this year, you're not going just to the king. But you're coming home to our Vinu Malkeinu.
sing it on Inkman Road, they sing it in Crown Heights, they sing it in Israel, they sing it in some mignonic or ripply, they sing it everywhere. And it goes like this. Sing the
tear in my eye. Why do I have a tear in my eye? Because this is the first song my father taught me to sing when I sang with him on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. And Robert Will, if you're listening, Robert knows that this is the most in here. I've
one more song. We're going to finish off Love in My Pena, but we've got to thank the Holy Brother of Moshe Khan, a, drive, a, a force behind Melbourne. We came from London, we took Sydney by storm, and we wanted to have you. That's what we met, I met. My dear you. friends, my dear friends, before we conclude, I want to tell you all something. On behalf of all of us, all the shuls in Melbourne, you know, tonight we've only got a few shuls, not because we've only got a few shuls, but because Absolutely. that's all we allow. Really, all the shuls are with us here tonight. And I want to tell you on behalf of all the holy rabbitsons out there, on behalf of all the rabbis, on behalf of all the chazarim, the gabayim, the community, on behalf of everyone. We've got a project High Holy Day, which is about you getting involved, you making it your, your young tip. I just want to say, if I mean, one message, you know, perhaps all the years when we celebrated in shul, we were relying on the rabbis and the chazan to lead the community. Maybe this year God is saying, I want you. I want to hear my beautiful son, my beautiful daughter, my beautiful child singing. I want to hear you connecting to me. The Chazanim are beautiful. The Rabbis are hopefully great. But we need you. And so this year, please God, we'll be in your shalim together. But if we're not, and we're home, you be the Chazanim. You be the Rabbi. You be the one to stand with your machsa and scream, Amina Malkeinu. Sing from your heart. Sing from your soul. Because believe me, you can do it. It's a dog. Let's take our news the late last song that we know.
next Saturday night, please join us, 8.45 for Abdullah and 9 o'clock for, where we bring 20 shoes of Melbourne and perhaps even more for a joint slichat, a joint service. We're literally be going around the shul, so it's not going to be live stream from here. We're going to be having literally 20 shuls involved. Tune in, spread the message, spread the love, get engaged, get involved. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. A big, big thank you to Zami who's behind the scenes. Zami. And to the maestro, Zami. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.